So this first image is by Daniel Fairweather, Devil's Garden. And uh, what I like about this image is the very nice shapes, uh, the way your eye kind of flows from the foreground up to these rocks that bounce you around back and forth, creating nice a nice layering effect. And then we get to the distant mountains in the back that seem to have sort of a fog over over them, or maybe it's just some clouds that are picking up some, some early morning or late evening light. So I really like that, and I like this really strong shape here that establishes sort of the center of interest, but it's got continuity. The light is nice and soft and diffuse. So I like all of that. It, 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 uh, it, it isn't the typical image that we see a lot of times in the desert with the strong light. It's got very soft, nice light. And I also like the way this sort of path leads you in very nicely. Uh, and then you it sort of suggest that the path follows through the through the frame here without actually seeing it. So I think that works works really well. I think the quality of the light is the thing that I think is is nicest. It is that soft, nice light that uh, just gives a nice ambiance and mood to the image. I think what I would do is to emphasize that to uh, work with those ideas about the light and about the softness of the shapes, especially in the background. So, you know, maybe something like, I'm going to, I'm going to darken the image using exposure because that will give us a better mood to the image. And that's probably more what it was like. And we can use whites here. Maybe even push up the highlights. So that's something that we normally don't do. We're always pulling highlights down, but I'm actually going to push the highlights up because look how that really separates out the light back here and the, uh, the variance in the light. Boost a little bit of the shadows. Maybe pull down in the blacks. A little more in the shadows. I'll add some clarity. little vibrance, maybe a little more white. I'll hold on option just to see what we are. Okay, and then the rest would be, that's a before, that's the after, much more, uh, much moodier, nicer light. I think the rest now would be to just isolate a few areas um, using some very basic dodging and burning to bring out the structure of the image, to make the image more dimensional. So I'm going to click on the adjustment brush. I'll select darken here, and we'll maybe put some of these trees in the foreground more in shadow because they will help to make these down here a little brighter. as well as this guy right here. Give him a nice shadow on one side, just making one side a little darker. And I will maybe darken a few areas back here. And then one more adjustment to just highlight a few areas. I'm going to lower the flow. One shortcut, by the way, for lowering the flow is if you have a keyboard that has a numeric uh, portion on the right hand side, you can just type in the flow you want. So if I type in 50, that lowers it down to 50. It's a lot easier than just grabbing that slider and moving it. And I'm driving it down to 50 just because I want to apply this very subtly and be able to add more to it if I want. One hundred to bring the flow back up to a hundred, and maybe a little bit brighter here. And I think something like that works very well. And 
that you see the before and the after. So the feel and the mood of the image, I think, is maintained. I think it's a nice job. We don't have to crop or anything. The composition is, is very nice. Everything flows into the picture. But now we've got a much moodier, more dramatic image versus here where everything is relatively flat and your eye doesn't really know where it wants to go necessarily except for the large shapes. This next image is by, don't know, panorama of, um, of a beautiful scene here in the mountains uh, with these trees in the foreground, uh, pine trees here, we've got some deciduous trees on the right, then we've got these ridges that basically flow off into the distance and these nice brooding clouds overhead that give you, that give us a nice bit of drama. So I like the panoramic format. I like the fact that you kind of move in here and then you see a lot of detail here, but then it gets less and less as we go back into the distance. What I've been talking about in terms of creating depth and creating uh, interest in the image. So I like that. I think we need to emphasize that. I think what could be improved is that sense of the foreground being closer to us and the distance being more distant, being, uh, being more uh, far away, because I think that just adds to the viewer's interest to kind of get a sense of what is back there. And it also creates a vision in the mind of the viewer of what it's like to stand in a place and just feel this vastness. And right now, everything feels a little bit too crowded in for me. It feels as though everything is kind of stacked on top of each other and everything is kind of calling for equal amounts of attention. So starting with this here, I don't know that I want to crop the image to get rid of that. Uh, this is probably something that we can do uh, with just a bit of cloning. This is a distraction because it really just leads your eye out of the frame, doesn't connect to anything, doesn't lead us anywhere. Your eye wants to stay here. So press Q to bring up the um, spotting tool. We'll click and drag down. And let me do that again so it's a little cleaner. I'll start a little higher. Something like that, and we can move this around a little bit. That looks a little bit too obvious, so you can always click and drag where you're cloning from. And we'll leave it there for now. You can definitely see the effect now, though now where your eye isn't pulled by that yellow uh, thing on the side there, those yellow bushes or flowers or whatever they are. Next thing I would, I would probably do is I'm going to go into the split toning here. I'm sorry, the HSL here and luminosity and maybe pull out the saturation in the sky just a little bit. Okay, adding more saturation makes the sky stronger, but that also makes it more, I think, um, more distracting. We don't need to make every part of the image equally attractive. We want to, again, create a sense of balance between things that are most interesting in the foreground and less interesting in the background. So I'm pulling out the saturation a little bit in the sky. That pushes it back, pushes it back a little bit. I'm also going to pull down a little bit on this orange saturation that the whoever submitted it added to added to the image. And there's also a graduated filter here that they added. So I'm going to pull down the clarity a little bit so we don't have so much of the definition in the sky. Again, I'm trying to create a balance and to create a sense of depth so that the clouds and the mountains look further away from us. That creates an image that is, in my opinion, much more inviting. And we'll also go here to the basic panel and maybe in the temperature, I'm just gonna warm it up a little bit so that we really get a feel for the light here in the foreground. I'm going to add an adjustment brush, make this darken, and just add some highlights. I'm going to use, I'm going to add highlights by darkening areas around them. So if I want to add some highlights to these bushes here, I can just darken in here, darken in here, 
and then I can adjust this to taste. Maybe darken this a little bit as well so it's not so bright. Okay, and I think that we are pretty much done there. So subtle adjustments, not a whole lot, but I think making the image a little more um, natural looking. So you see the one on the left there, which is very aggressive, very strong. I think everything is kind of stacked one on top of the other. Whereas here, I've tried to create a little bit more uh, dimension to the image. And, and it's a subtle adjustment, but it makes a big difference because our eyes are very sensitive to those kinds of things. Our eyes are very sensitive to areas of contrast, things that get things that are brighter, darker, and how things are relative uh, when, when next to each other. All right, so otherwise, very nice picture. This image is by Susan uh, Kopchik. Thank you for sharing. So what I like about this image is uh, the the scene. Uh, these these two uh, this couple has walked through this down this path past these beautiful trees and they're heading towards what looks like the ocean. And I like the way that Susan has framed the couple here in between the branches of the trees. That's really interesting. Um, it creates a, a sense of connection, of depth there. They're kind of in, uh, you know, in this landscape, uh, enjoying this scene. So I like that, and I also like the sense of scale where the trees look much bigger, and you really get a feel for their ma their majestic stance. Right, these trees look very majestic, very sturdy, very uh, resilient in front of this ocean. I think what we need to do is we need to create a hierarchy. By that I mean that right now, the image is about the trees or about the couple, or we don't know. You know, there's there's too much attention being called to all parts, and so your eye can get lost here, or your eye can get lost here, or you see them and you know that they're the center of interest, but boy, there's a lot there that they have to compete with uh, because the trees are very dominating. So I think we need to create a sense of, again, movement, and the way we can do that is to, to show that they walked through this path. And the way we do that is to create light where they're going and more shadow where we are now, where the viewer is. So what I would do here is I would darken this a lot. Something like that. Push up the whites. Uh, we will warm it up a little bit because I really want to warm up where they are, but I'm going to cool off the foreground in a minute. I'll drop the blacks a little more. Again, push up those highlights. Add a little clarity. Add some vibrance. And then to create more of that depth that I was talking about before, I think I'm going to pull the exposure down even more. I'm going to add a graduated filter here. And this one, first of all, is going to cool off that foreground a little bit. Something like that. And I mentioned in one of the past live streams that we can edit this uh, graduated filter. So I'm going to select the brush and I'm going to uh, go back to this filter again. Okay. And we'll select this brush and I'm going to add to this graduated filter, like that. And I'm going to take away from the graduated filter by holding on the Option key, and it becomes a minus symbol. And just kind of slowly 
take away from this area. So we're not cooling off where they are because I want to make that or keep that warm. So that's what my mask looks like now. Now we can come in here and maybe cool off the image a little bit more. And then I will add a radio filter like this. And I'm going to use a pretty high feather, 100 maximum. So the feather on the radio filter means that the, the adjustment is very smooth. Notice that the mask basically is strong here and then it fades towards the center. Now right now we're uh, selecting everything but the circle. So I want to in invert the mask and select everything inside the circle, like so. And I will just maybe add a little bit of exposure here, warm this up just a little bit. And then last but not least, I'm going to select some adjustment brushes here and I'm going to add a mask for, or uh, do some dodging here. So let's darken that. Let's really make this dark so that you can see those little light streaks coming through. In fact, I might even crop a tiny bit now, now that I see a better sense of what the image is looking like. Now, one question might be, why don't I crop in from the left? The problem with cropping in from the left is that if I crop in from the left, then I make the tree on the left very dominating because now your eye has nowhere to go and now your tree is stuck, your eye, I'm sorry, your eye gets stuck here. By showing the back here, we make a connection across the horizon, which is where the water is. And so your eyes can kind of move around the trees, but by bringing the edge of the tree right up to the edge of the frame, that is a border that your eye is going to be attracted to, and we do not want that. Okay, I'm gonna create a new adjustment here, and we'll make this lighten. And we'll just touch a few little spots here in the foreground. Something like that. And I think now, for me, what I, what I was trying to show is how we can take an image where everything is sort of calling for equal amounts of attention. Your eye doesn't really know where to go. Yes, it's going to go to the couple because, again, humans in the landscape are going to be the thing that attracts your eye. But here, it's much clearer for me, I think, to get a sense of what's happening, the story here. They're walking through this beautiful landscape, walking out towards the ocean. They walked through this shadow area. They're going out to light, and that creates a sense of movement and definitely a sense of depth. I feel like I want to follow them out to the water here. Here, not so much. I want to hang out and check out these trees. That really is what I'm going for. That's the difference, I think, between this image and this image, is that here you're invited to follow them, whereas here uh, you may not follow them. You may hang out and, and do something else. All right, so thanks. This image is by Kerry Gordon. And love the feel and mood of this image, uh, the, the, the light, the ephemeral nature of the picture is beautiful, the graphic nature of it, um, the fact that things are soft, it's got a dreamy quality to it. All of those things are really nice. Compositionally, uh, I like the way the design of the picture is uh, throwing you a little bit off center, and that's good. The, this light streaming in here from the right along the fog bank takes you to this island on this peaceful, calm, serene surface of water with a reflection. I think what can be improved is making all of those things that I just said even stronger. And the way I see to do that is to create more dimension and more depth to the picture. And one easy way of doing that is to cool off the image slightly. Because when we do that, you see now we are creating more tension between cool and warm areas. We're creating uh, more magic in the light because the light now has around it areas that are cooler. 
And again, everything in photography, everything in visual art is relative. It's all about relationships. If you've ever seen those illusions where they put one color next to another and you can't tell that what one color is or the color of the color, the color of the one next to the other changes, that's about how things look next to each other. And uh, we can't, we, we often try to isolate things by themselves, but it's how they work in relation. So cooling the image off like this, I think, makes the light warmer. And if we wanted to emphasize that a bit more, now we can go into HSL and I can select the target adjustment tool right there. Go to saturation and then just click anywhere where this warm light is and just boost this up a little bit like that. And we'll go to luminosity, click up here in the blues, pull this down a little bit. And now I think we've got an image that is much more inviting and much more interesting because we've got this tension, tension between cool and warm. Okay, I think for me this one is a bit dull. By dull I mean that the light isn't as exciting. Here, the light is just creating this shaft of warmth in what is relatively a calm, cool kind of setting. And you can, you know, um, Kerry can, can judge this for himself. He can move it a little bit cooler or warmer. That's going to be up to him in terms of what he wants to convey to the viewer. But I think that the idea is still there. Next image is by Larry Dunn Chris Cross. I believe his name is Larry Dunn and the picture is named Chris Cross. <laughs> um, beautiful graphic image, love the shapes, love the tonality. Uh, I love the way he's used the long exposure to give that uh, sort of ethereal look to the sky. And that's really nice. I also like the the design of the picture. So we've got shapes that are repeating uh, and they all are sort of working in balance, but the spacing between the images, the tonal variation or the intervals between the spaces are different. So this building is further away. This one is a certain distance. This was a different distance. So that creates, again, a nice rhythm to the picture. I think what I would do is probably to create a nicer or smoother bridge between the highlights and the black. One of the keystones of any great black and white image is that there's a nice smooth bridge between highlights and shadows. And I, I think that in this image right now, the highlights, the, the crisscross is a little bit too strong. It's a little bit overpowering of the image. So I'll go into develop, just pull down highlights. Right, pulls down the strong highlights. Now there's a nicer connection. I see the sky better now. I can appreciate the sky more because it's not being overpowered by the building. Then I can go into whites and just push the whites up, but this pushes everything up now. So all my whites get brighter, not just the building by itself, maybe a little bit in the shadows. Again, creating a smoother transition between these beautiful darks here and the beautiful whites. Nicer transition in the midtones creates, I think, black and white images that just have that seductive quality that we all love about uh, that we all love in black and white images. Um, I might also do something like create an adjustment here, and I'm going to. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is here, but I'm just going to reduce the clarity a tiny bit. Because the sky is kind of blurred and, and has that beautiful motion to it, maybe if we add a little bit to that here as well, maybe over here. All right, and this is just minus clarity. So we're just kind of softening the edges of the image in terms of texture, so once again, your eye has a way to move through the picture, but it's not softening it to the extent that it looks blurry. It's just a gradual transition that is subtle, but I can assure you that um, anyone who looks at the picture will notice it. So there's your before and after.
Next image is by Emily Kelting. So love this picture with the little boy. Um, looks like a little boy praying in a temple. Um, love the light streaming in through what looks like a brick wall there, and then light is coming through the uh, the spacing in the wall. Those, that beautiful design. We see some light here um, streaming in, and then of course we've got him, and that's that's definitely where our eye is going to go, right? That's the center of interest, but we've got this connection between the boy and the light coming in. And so I think that works really well. I like the fact that we've got a strong diagonal. Even his hands are, again, pointing in this same diagonal shape. Everything about him has got that design that is strengthening this. We've got this reflection in the back. So that's a nice, simple movement of the picture. I think that works really well. I think what we probably need to do is, what would improve it, is to strengthen that even more. I think to create a little bit more drama in the light and to get rid of some things that aren't that important. For example, we don't need to see everything that's back here. This is actually kind of a distraction. We don't need to see all the details of what's in the corner here. We don't need to really see up here. We can leave some for the imagination. We can suggest and the viewer will know that this is the inside of a temple and the shadows are just helping to illuminate the light. So I might again lower the exposure. I would increase the shadows a bit. Actually, I'll leave the shadows where they are. I pull down some of the highlights. Notice how that gives us a little bit more interest here because we're diminishing those super bright highlights and now we can see a little more of the tonality and the sort of the light streaming through this misty fog here. A little more vibrance, maybe a little bit warmer. And then We'll add a few things here. One is we'll add some dodging and burning. So I think we can darken a few areas selectively. As I mentioned before, some of this area back here. Maybe some of this up here. Maybe in here. And then I'll create another brush. And just lighten a fury. So I love this light bouncing around in here. I think that can be brought out just a little bit. Like that. We'll work on him in a minute. And maybe that same light bouncing in front of him. Just a little bit. Like that. And then last but not least, we can create a radio filter. And right now it's set to everything but what's inside the filter. Of course, I want to invert. And now we can add some highlights. and maybe a little bit of clarity to make him stand out. And one thing that I will try here is I'm going to also add a graduated filter this way. Don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll see. And we can just pull out a little bit of the clarity just to soften out this part back here. And I'll even pull some of the highlights down too. And I'm going to go back to this radio filter on the little boy and just increase this a little bit more. Okay. So all I've tried to do is to 
emphasize the things that are already in the image by not being afraid to get rid of or push back or diminish areas of the picture. But the frame works. Why did I lighten this part of uh, the uh, stone here where the boy is, is uh, standing? Uh, because I darken this area here. And so I want to create that as a platform, as a foundation for the image at the, at, at the bottom. And then your eye doesn't really get lost here. Your eye is going to follow the light rays up to the light because that, again, is what creates the mood and the drama in the picture. All right, so hopefully that, that uh, is helpful. Next image. Uh, this picture is um, by, don't know, but uh, great picture, just capturing very simple view of this scene with people on this ridge, uh, the kite in the sky, and what I love is that the kite is sort of in the space of the clouds. It looks like there's another kite over here. So I really like that. Um, I, th I like the simplicity of the picture. And um, I also like the fact that the ground is kind of tilted. Normally, I'm a stickler for having horizontals or horizons that are level. But in this case, I'm okay with that. I think it may actually be, um, well, you could think of it as the, as the ground being tilted. Maybe they're on some kind of incline. If we try to straighten this out, Uh, don't know. Not sure if that actually makes it better or worse. Let me make that a little bit. Maybe we can split the difference. Something like that. To me, it just seems like they're on in some kind of an incline. I think I think that's okay. That's something that you can decide for yourself. But I think generally what we want to do here is we want to emphasize the just the shapes and the colors. So I would pull down some highlights. I would add in some whites. Blacks. Maybe cool it off a little bit to really make that blue sky come through. And we can go into HSL and maybe drop the luminosity in the blue channel. And then we can come back to vibrance and push this up quite a bit. And now that I look at it some more, maybe straighten it out some more, maybe. Sometimes you just don't know. Not sure. Not sure on the straightening of the horizon there. Um, but otherwise, I think that works pretty nice. And I like the, the problem with, with cropping, with straightening it out is that you crop a little bit and now this other kite here on the right gets very close to the edge and that's why I was hesitant to do it originally. Whereas this way you can see that the whole kite there and I don't know that I would want to come in and eliminate that completely. I think that might be uh, limiting the picture too much, taking out some of the context of the picture. So I, I would leave it there. All right. Next image is by Ron Lacey. And I like uh, the, the colors. I like the shapes, the textural quality. I like these tr the repetition of these trees here in the background. And the light is very kind of soft, uh, not too harsh. But again, we've got a lot of detail in the picture. I think what this picture really is about is about sort of the connection between the foreground with all the colors and the trees in the background. And if that's the case, then this is all extra information that we do not need because this is really not doing anything much for the picture. Really, we have only need enough of this to create that sort of juxtaposition, if you will. So I would bring this in. something like that, or I would unlock the aspect ratio here 
And I think taking advantage of those shapes in the background is going to provide with us for a much stronger picture. Something like that. And then I would add some slight dodging here to create a little bit more dimension to the picture. So again, we've got these shadows here. By doing this, I really make or highlight those colors in the foreground. Maybe cool off the image just a tiny bit. And I'm going to create another adjustment brush here. This will be highlights or dodge. And again, just add a few little spots here. Something like that. And that is the mask there. And that is our before and after. Of course, this is before the crop. If we look at the crop, and this is the first image that I've cropped uh, this heavily. Let us go to this image here, and I will reset. And now we can compare. Okay, so I think this gives me a much better sensation of the scene, of the shapes of the trees, the repetition, a sense of the contrast between the foreground and the background. Whereas here, I really can't get to these trees because I'm getting lost in an overabundance of yellows. Okay, and if you wanted to uh, add a little more here, maybe we can do something like that, but nonetheless, I still think that that gives us nice movement now, front to back, up, down, along this diagonal. Thank you. Next image is by Paul Varoque. Thank you for sharing. I like uh, this scene here with the beautiful pastoral landscape. Um, love the dramatic clouds in the background. I like the panoramic format. Um, I like the light that you see in the image front to back. These little valleys here picking up light. Ridges here picking up light. So that creates a nice repetition. I also like the forest here in the foreground. And again, it gets repeated in the back. So we've got this nice movement through the picture. I really like that. Um, I think one thing that's problematic for me is, or I think is an issue in terms of the design, is that we've got this one hay bale here on the left-hand side. And while it does create, you could argue, you know, something in the foreground to lead you in, it also is something that keeps you there. It doesn't allow you to, to flow into the image as nicely as I would like. I think it's, it's alone. It's a lone, it's a lone object. It's a shape that doesn't have any way of connecting to other things in the picture. And everything in a picture, in terms of leading the viewer through and creating interest, is about connecting shapes. That's how, that's why your eye kind of follows all these trees. They are connected to each other. If I were to do something drastic, like clone this hay bow here, just to show you what I mean, um, actually, I wanted to Put it over here so let me do that again and then i'm going to move this all right now you see what i'm talking about what i mean is that now we've got a way of connecting one shape to another and design wise our eye moves in now it doesn't work perfectly because the hay bells are completely identical and your eye can see that but if they if this one here was smaller or larger or had a different light on it or a different color anything that would make it different would all automatically create variation what i'm trying to show you here is from a design perspective how our eye connects to other things that are similar 
Whereas if we take this away, that is lost. Now your eye immediately gets pulled to the bottom left hand corner here and um, and it's it makes it more difficult to move off of that. I can crop in from the bottom uh, and that would also improve the image but that again takes out a component that I think probably was important to the composition and now it doesn't feel quite as complete. We kind of jump into the forest here in the foreground especially because we don't have any kind of interesting light. So I'm going to leave this here for now but I think that is the compositional element that I think um, would improve it the best, which is to get this away from the corner. Uh, if it's the only thing, if it's one halo, it's hard to have it on the corner and, and make it work, especially when it's got getting nice light, it's bright, a lot of contrast, texture, all those things. Make it just interesting, too interesting to be by itself in the corner. Otherwise, I would probably um, darken this a little bit to make it a little bit moodier. We can add some whites, drop the blacks, or add some black into there, add some shadows, and I would darken a few areas. So for example, this whole bottom left-hand side here, just to create some movement. Movement meaning darker, gets brighter, maybe in the bottom of these trees here to create that sense of depth and them being closer to us. And then I'm gonna drop the flow by hitting five on my keyboard and that drops it to 50. And then maybe just a few spots back here. I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. Okay, that's what I wanted, that nice kind of darkening of this area back here. And we need a little more contrast in this middle area. That's why I'm doing that. Okay, and then I'm going to create a new brush and we'll call this one Lighten, or we'll, we'll, we'll select the Lighten preset. Um, maybe just a little more light there. Maybe back here, I'm going to drop the flow to 50, maybe just the tops of some of these trees here in the foreground. I'm going to add some overall clarity, a little bit of warmth. And Something like that. I think also I'm going to go into the sky here. Pull down some of the highlights. A little bit more clarity. And we'll just add a touch contrast to the whole thing. And I think that is more lively, more energetic. There's a little more energy in the light there. The clouds are a little bit more dramatic, but not overpowering. I think the center of interest is right here. Notice, this is very important. Notice that I did not brighten all the areas that are getting light. If I do that, I make them all the same. And if you make things all the same, you haven't done anything. It's only when you create variation that things get interesting. So I made this one a little bit brighter, this one a little bit, I left it alone. So your eye can connect and see that the light is hitting the tops of these areas, but they're not equal, because if you make them equal, then that creates ambiguity. And, and what we want is essentially for the eye to flow this way. Okay. This image is by Judith Miller. Thank you for sharing. Um, I like the shapes here, I like the color. I like the light that is striking on uh, the side of the building and creating these nice reflections. This probably needs to be pushed back a little bit. We kind of soften those edges there. Um, and I like the I like the shapes and the rhythmic feel of the of the buildings, especially as we go into the distance here. I think what we need is to take a little bit uh, simplify, to take some away. We need to simplify the image a bit. By that I mean really 
this is where the image is interesting. There's really nothing about this here, I think, that adds anything to the picture. So if we, if we uh, let me unlock the crop. If we come up here from the bottom, and then the other thing is this space here is right in the middle of the of the picture and I think this could probably be a little bit off center now we can pull the exposure down a little bit cool it off a little bit to pull out some of those blues and cool colors that give us a little bit more drama in the picture I think we can also pull down the highlights I don't know that I'm getting as much uh, fidelity in the file because it's a JPEG. I'm sure if it was a raw file, it would be better up here. But you can see there's more color here, more interest. And then I'm going to add an adjustment brush. And this one will be highlights. So I'll pull the highlights down here and we'll apply this here. Don't know how much that's going to do. Oh, I need a flow of 100. Let's do that again. Something like that. And then one more brush, I think, to create a little bit more depth. And we're going to darken a few spots here. And there's a before and after. Otherwise, very nice. I like the shapes, I like the graphic nature, I like the repetition through the buildings. So very nice there in terms of the design. Images by Ben Assen. Thank you for sharing. Um, so this is a really nice composition uh, with shapes, building on top of shapes. Nice repetition. We've got this nice wall cap, cap, catching this side light with some nice shadows that create these striking diagonal elements. Uh, we've got more interesting shapes up here. Notice that there's a group of three, so that's really nice because it, it, it creates a pattern. Our, our eyes love pattern, just like the pattern here in these windows. Another pattern over here. So there's a nice kind of flow of this picture through here, even though it's all kind of textured and graphic, but your eye can kind of find a way of, of where your eye should be going. This is interesting, but you don't want to stay here. You want to continue to go up here. There's some writing on the walls here, which is interesting. And then we get up to the three water towers, uh, water towers at the top, which is really, which is really good. Um, so nice, nice job there. I like, I like the sort of the graphic element of it, a very nice urban scene. What I think can be improved is just to emphasize that a bit more and maybe, once again, to create more dimension with the use of warm and cool. Um, shadows, areas that are dark, tend to be on the cooler side because they're not getting direct sunlight and so they're getting reflected light from the sky. And that's something that we can use to emphasize or to strengthen an image. So by that I mean that um, we can First, let's darken a few areas. I think the shadows here can be definitely emphasized a bit more. And that really pushes this part of the building forward. Okay, same thing down here. I think we'll also maybe darken a little bit back here, maybe in here. Maybe down here. And then to cool the shadows, we can do that in two ways. One way is to go into um, HSL. I'm sorry, we'll go into the tone curve. And the tone curve can be used 
with all three channels RGB, but you can also go and select individual channels and I can select the blue channel and I only want to put a little bit of coolness into the shadows. So I'm going to lock the highlights and the midtones by putting a point there. So those don't change. And then I can go into the shadows and this pulls, pulls, I'm sorry, this pulls blue out of the shadows. This, this puts more blue into the shadows. Okay, that pushes it too much, but kind of like split toning, but I'm using it, you, uh, doing it with the tone curve because it gives you a bit more control. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, as I mentioned with the split toning is, and we'll reset this, or we'll turn this off. Go into split toning, select the shadows, and add a little bit of saturation into the shadows. This controls the balance, so pushing this to the left pushes that tone more into the shadows, uh, I'm sorry, more into the highlights, and pushing it this way more into the shadows. So before and after, not a huge difference, but notice that this one I think has a little more dimension between the cool and warm light, whereas this one is just completely warm and I think that makes it a little bit more, a little flatter, let's say. Okay, and again, this is something that you can do to taste. Um, it definitely is something that you will see more obviously when you make a print of the image, but um, just something to keep in mind, otherwise, um, I think it works really well overall in terms of a compositional design. This image is by, don't know, but it is of a boy that looks like he just came out of the pool or getting into a pool or what have you. Um, simple composition, we're looking right at him, eyes are nice and sharp. Um, I like the background, is simple, it's soft. Um, good use of focus um, and I like the goggles which give a little accent, a red accent. I think what we can do here is to make it a little bit more interesting, not as flat. And by that, once again, I will go into the basic panel. I will darken overall the picture. Maybe even go darker, something like that. Push up the whites. Push up a little bit in the shadows, highlights. Not so much an exposure. Okay, we can cool it off a little bit. Okay, so that makes it a little bit more, I think, a little more dramatic. Um, you really feel the, 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 the light on his skin. You really get a sense of the organic nature of the picture. And I think that's a little bit more interesting. And then what I would do is I would add um, some lightning to his eyes. That's always a good thing to do with close-up portraits. And I'm going to drop the flow really low here and just add a little bit overall to his face. Maybe in the goggles here. And then I'll back off a little bit in the exposure, but I think that that does the I think that works pretty well. So again, you look at the one on the left here, it's just sort of flat. I think here I just wanted to create a little more depth to the picture and and make push him a little bit back, but not so back that he's lost in the frame. I really want to try to emphasize the light and how the light is sort of hitting his body and around his face and bring his eyes out more. I think here you really kind of look more into his eyes, whereas here everything is a lot, lot more... Um, flatter, if you will. Okay. This image is by Paul in the UK. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
again, one of these pictures with this beautiful, serene foreground, um, nice mountains in the distance, nice clouds, um, and lots of, lots of simplicity. I think what we could improve here is maybe to simplify it a bit more. By that, I don't mean taking things away, although some of these um, things here in the bottom, whatever these things are, these shapes in the sand or the water, I'm not sure, they're a bit distracting. I don't know that they add anything. They don't connect to anything else, so it's not like they are continuing through the picture. And I think to tighten up the frame, by that I mean I think the balance between the foreground or this whole section here and the mountains in the sky, the balance is a bit off. It's not, it, there's probably too much in the, in, the, in the foreground. So I would probably push this up a little bit. Maybe something like that. I'm gonna hit Q for spotting. Make this smaller faster. Okay, and take that out there. Okay, that cleans that up. Um, now I think we can Darken the image, well, I'll leave it where it was. I think the exposure is fine there. If I push the whites up now, we're gonna make the foreground very bright. And while I love this gradient, it's gonna to be too white, I think, for it to kind of balance. I love what's happening up here, but down here it's getting too powerful. So how do we control this? Well, there's a couple of different strategies to do this. I would probably adjust the whites so that the majority of the picture looks pretty good. So that by that I mean the foreground. So something like that. Then I'm gonna use a graduated filter. And remember that the graduated filter also has a white and a black point. And I can use that to make the sky much more interesting and dramatic. Drop the blacks a little up there. We'll come back to the basic panel. Check our overall blacks. And I still think that we probably have too much in the foreground. It just feels like it's a little bit too much going on. Push up the shadows. I'm going to come back to this graduated filter and also push up the clarity here. And we've also got dehaze as well. So I can use a little bit of dehaze. So there's our before, and there's our after. And I think that compositionally, now that we've got the image a little bit more um, looking balanced between the foreground and the background, I'm not 100% sure of this area here. It may just be too much of a bridge to ask the viewer to get from here up here, especially because we don't have anything happening here. So as as a, as a test or something that I do myself, sometimes I will try to eliminate things to see if the composition gets stronger. So for example, we'll come back here to the cropping tool. Let's open this up as far as it was and let's come up and see what happens if we make this, let's say, into a panorama. And what I'm looking for in all images, right? What I'm looking for is, is leading the eye through areas that change, but also have enough change so that you get to the next area, right? So in other words, we're starting here very, very passive. This is very calm. We're finding this gradient moving from kind of a grayish color into these 
beautiful green turquoise colors and then up to these mountains and the sky. And I'm not sure that if the more we add of this, the more or less we strengthen that movement for the eye. So back where we were, oops, sorry. I didn't want to reset the image, just wanted to reset the crop. There we go, sorry about that. Maybe like some, maybe something like that is a good compromise. I'm not 100% sure. I will be honest and say that I find the sort of the, 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 the inactivity in the foreground to be a problem. I'm not quite sure how to fix that. I think it just has to do with the fact that while it's beautiful in terms of that gradient, but there isn't enough, I think, to make this um, as interesting as it could be. If we had a few breaking waves here, we've got a few things that are kind of happening in the picture, I think that would be, that would be a, a very big um, addition, a way of keeping you moving. And right now, there's just not enough to keep you going through. So that's not to say that that's not a negative criticism per se. It's just thinking about how the design might be improved um, and where it is is problematic. All right. But otherwise, um, I like sort of the vision, the the vision that um, that Paul had, and this is what photography is all about. It's about going for a vision and then continuing to improve on, improve, um, improve on it. Okay, last but not least, this image is by Anne uh, Kleckner. Thanks for sharing. And um, I really like this picture in terms of the movement. If we think about a little bit about the last picture, here we've got um, a different situation. Now we've got a lot of activity in the foreground that moves us up through the picture up to the beautiful mountains in the back. Uh, and I think that that works well. I like sort of the lines here. So there's some interesting lines. Our eye obviously wants to go this way, maybe around this, maybe up. I like that. This adds a nice foreground element, some interesting shapes. What we need to do is we need to make sure that this is not diminished by our eyes getting pulled this way or getting pulled that way. We want to make sure that these can these things connect. Um, connecting shapes, connecting colors, connecting patterns, connecting uh, light. That's what creates a path through an image, not just the leading line, but it's the way things connect. So I would probably suggest a tiny bit of a crop here. Um, just a little bit to simplify our edges and also maybe something like that. Okay, I'm going to check our whites, check blacks. I think it needs to be a little bit warmer little clarity. A little vibrance. Adjusting the tint a little bit. Tint is basically the balance between green and magenta. So I find it to be a little bit greenish. That's what happens with the tint when we go to green and I'm pushing it in the other direction towards magenta, which puts a little more red or magenta into the picture, makes the sky a little bit bluer, a little cooler, makes the foreground a little bit more uh, richer in terms of the warmth. And then I would um, a little more a little more vibrance here. Then I'm going to use once again, a dodging brush. to create a little more variation here. A 
new brush this will be just to lighten a few spots here especially back here I'm going to go into HSL here and um, I'm still not quite happy with the foreground in terms of the hue. So I'm just rocking this back and forth, see how it changes. Add a bit more contrast. Okay, now all those mountains are clipping in the back, you see that. So I want a little more light in the foreground, but I don't want these mountains to clip, so I will just add a graduated filter like that, and this will be to pull back those highlights. And now you can see that they are gone. When I go back to the whites, hold on the option, they're gone. So I just added a graduated filter just for highlights, just to balance out the tones in the distant mountains from the rest of the whites in the image. And I think we've got a lot more depth now in the image in the after, a little bit warmer, a little richer. Um, and your eye definitely wants to follow this sort of crevasse here into the background up to the mountains Whereas here, it's not as strong. I think you kind of get lost in this area here, which is kind of uh, not too uh, Interesting in terms of the tonality and the and the uh, Variance in the color. I think here we've got a little bit more of that happening and the image definitely pulls you front to back Okay, um, so I think that pretty much does it. Um, thank you, everybody. I don't know if we've got any questions that you want me to address. There's a question about the texture slider. Um, do I use the texture slider? Yes, I do use a texture slider. Um, I like it. Uh, I haven't, s really it's one of those things that I find as an icing. It's kind of like icing on the cake. We haven't talked much about texture. We haven't talked much about sharpening. And the reason for that is because you know, I've been just trying to get through as many of your pictures and show you basic adjustments. But yes, texture is um, a powerful tool. I think I may have talked about texture in one of the previous webinars where I compared it to clarity and what the differences are. But I will repeat that um, here. So let's take this image, for example, if I add clarity to this image, cl clarity is mid-tone contrast, but clarity also will make the image somewhat brighter. You see how it brightens parts of the image. Whereas texture will add the same type of mid-tone contrast, but does not change the tonality. It basically just adds more of a broad sharpening or texture. So that's the difference between texture and clarity. Clarity also adds that sense of sharpness, but it also increases the apparent brightness of the midtones, And sometimes that's useful and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes you want that because it adds that little sparkle, but sometimes you don't want that um, because you don't want that additional brightness. So uh, they are tools that have, uh, can be used depending on, on what you're trying to achieve. If I wanted to add, let's say, texture to this part of this image, or let's just say more detail, I wouldn't use clarity because we already have a problem with that being too bright and clarity is just gonna make it brighter. So texture would be the way to go in this particular case. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's the texture adjustment. Anybody else before we end tonight? Any other questions? Um, we'll be having another webinar next week and uh, I hope to get through another batch of images and uh, we'll see um, how we go from there after that. I hope everyone is staying uh, healthy and safe as we sort of ride out this uh, situation that we're all in and hopefully we can get back to normal as soon as possible. So I wish everyone a happy and healthy evening and a happy and healthy future as well. So thanks a lot for watching. Good night and uh, 
See you next time.